Turkey Tom is no more. He's been destroyed. He's shit. This is the Chicken Chad channel. And what could be more Chad than making videos about women? Recently, YouTube introduced a series of anti-harassment rules as a part of their community guidelines, which are worded so vaguely that they can get away with banning anyone and not having to face any real repercussions for it. Not that it would actually matter if they were breaking their own rules, as we've seen many times before. So I guess now it's time for me to stop making videos bullying people, and instead make videos bullying movies. And we're better to start than with Israel. And we're better to start than with the Middle East. And we're better to start than with Marvel movies. ENOUGH FROM THE CLOUD! In my Joker review slash discussion slash thing, I briefly talked about how I don't like Marvel movies and how bad they are. That's why Marvel keeps making dumb movie after dumb movie after dumb movie. Because these glorified theme park rides make a stupid amount of money, and they keep on making money. But that was a pretty short little hot take, a little rant, you know. You could fit that in a tweet. Today I'd like to make a long and drawn out video for ad rip. Today I'd like to make a video about why I don't like Marvel movies, because I actually have a lot to say about them, and I think it's deserving of a standalone video essay thing. Whatever you want to call these. So buckle up, Groy Tonys. It's time to discuss why I absolutely hate Thanos and memes and uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm uh, I'm kind of depressed or something. Maybe I, maybe I need Prozac or some other SSRI. I don't know. In other news, I am in I know some other people have made videos where they review every Marvel movie already, and sure, that's cool, but I'm Turkey Fucking Tom. Your reviews suck dick, your memes are super lame, and no one cares what you have to say. I am the alpha reviewer. My grand total of zero reviews under my belt is a testament to that. And, uh, yeah, screw you all. You suck. Delete your channels today. Not a single person would care. Because I saw Infinity War four times. And you know what? I'd probably see it a fifth time. Yeah. If anybody wants to go see it with me, um, I'm free all weekend. Can't lie, I don't really vibe with this guy. I'm not feeling mean today. I'm not feeling bitter. No, no, no. ENOUGH FROM THE CLOUD! It's been an interesting experience for me growing up with these films and getting to see the progression of them, as well as being part of a generation that has been collectively immersed in superhero culture for the past 15 years or so. When my parents were kids, comic books and superheroes were for nerds. Sure, you had your odd comic book-related movie, and they weren't exactly frowned upon or anything like that. Comic book sales were certainly much more impressive than they are now, but comic book movies weren't really accounting for most of the summer blockbusters at the time. In the early 2000s, all that started to change, with movie studios and large companies in Hollywood acquiring the rights to a number of comic book properties hence the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and the X-Men movies. I remember watching the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films when I was a little kid over and over on this shitty little portable DVD player I had, specifically the first two movies. Perhaps I'm experiencing a little bit of nostalgic bias when I say that they are my favorite Spider-Man movies, but to this day, they really are great to me. Sure, they're a little dated and have some goofy moments, but that's really part of the charm. Evil Dead has just as many weird, quirky scenes, and to me, it's part of what makes Raimi's movies so good. That being said, some of Toby's acting in them does come across as a little silly in retrospect. <laughs> I also like the X-Men movies a lot. They had some pretty good writing, and I can usually get past some of the corny dialogue that they have, which I admit is not great, and even for the time, they could have done a lot better. Take it easy. Calm I can't down. do this! I promise you, you're yeah. fine. Warren, relax. Warren, it's a better life. It's what we all want. No. It's what you want. But all of these movies were pretty financially successful in their own right, making well past their budgets and raking in millions of dollars for the studios that had licenses for these characters. But everything that had come before would pale in comparison to what began in 2008. The first Iron Man movie is interesting. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have at least a little bit of contempt for this movie, seeing how it did start this whole thing that I'm 
sort of pissy about today. On one hand, this movie isn't really bad. In fact, I enjoy watching it a lot. It's got pretty good writing, the story is interesting, and to someone like me who wasn't already a fan of Iron Man as a character, I became invested in his backstory and the process he went through to become the hero that he is. And it's also got some charming humor that I appreciate a lot. This has all become pretty standard for Marvel movies by now, but at the time it was one of a kind, and in some ways I miss the simplicity of this movie. The story of Tony going from a shallow businessman to being captured by a terrorist and realizing his weapons are being used for harm, and eventually defeating the Big Lebowski was pretty fun to see. And 10 years later, the film hasn't really aged at all. The truth is, I am Iron Man. Not to mention Robert Downey Jr. inhabits his role super well. To me, it actually feels like the role he was born to play. A cocky, womanizing douchebag with a penchant for engineering and a little heart buried somewhere in him, no pun intended. Just feels natural for RDJ, and I think he did a great job. Overall, it's just a much more simple and formulaic movie, which I don't mind. A little over a month after Iron Man was released, Louis Leterrier's Hulk movie was released, with Ed Norton playing Bruce Banner, which is weird. It feels like a really odd choice to go with Ed to play Bruce Banner, even speaking as someone who isn't really a fan of Hulk comics at all and isn't really familiar with the mythos behind him, apart from from what's being presented in the handful of Hulk movies that have come out. He just feels kind of unnatural in the movie, his acting feels very boring and stilted, and he just kind of plays an average guy, really. There's nothing special about Bruce. It does look like shit. I don't hate it, but it's, it's not... It's not even really good. What I do hate, however, is this weirdly edited but super early 2000s feeling intro. Stupid fast editing with text flashing on screen and like these obnoxious green Modern Warfare 3 effects. We get it. Hulk is green. Also, why ruin the entire internal struggle that Bruce Banner feels for the whole movie right in the opening? For that matter, why summarize the events of the film in the intro? We see him in this weird testing chamber turning into Hulk and then getting up and going harambe mode on everyone in the room, clearly outlining the fact that in the movie he's going to try to avoid going green bean mode so he doesn't hurt his loved ones. With great power comes great homosexuality. Then we see a bunch of soldiers running around and military documents showing how the military comes after him later in the movie. I I just don't understand why they would do this so early on. It kind of ruins the entire plot. The movie opens on a scene of Bruce in some South American village hanging out. Okay, sorry. I, I don't want this video to turn into an epic Hulk rant, but the point is, it's not good. Lame acting. The writing is uh, fine, I guess, but it's nothing special. And the ending is just the same as Iron Man. It ends with Tim Roth making Tim Nelson inject him with the juice and it makes him strong and then they fight and then... Then Hulk beats him with the power of being ripped. Whatever, dumb movie over, moving on. I'm feeling a light to decent six on this one, Tran. At the end of the movie, Tony Stark approaches the general, who is the dad of the movie's stereotypical bimbo character, and explains to him that he's putting together a team. If I told you we were putting a team together, who's we? Clearly this was setting up that this movie would be linked to the Avengers, showing that Marvel had plans to create this big epic universe right from the beginning. But as we all know, Mark Ruffalo plays Hulk in the Avengers. So what happened? Where did where did, where did good old Eddie go? Why isn't he in the Avengers, huh man? What the freak happened to good old Ed? According to Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios and second most likely candidate to be the Zodiac Killer, we have made the decision to not bring Ed Norton back to portray the title role of Bruce Banner in the Avengers. Our decision is definitely not one based on monetary factors, but instead rooted in the need for an actor who embodies the creativity and collaborative spirit of our other talented cast members. The Avengers demands players who thrive working as part of an ensemble, as evidenced by Robert, Chris H, Chris E, Sam, Scarlet, and all of our talented cast. We are looking to announce a name actor who fulfills these requirements and is passionate about the iconic role in the coming week. Apparently Ed wasn't super pleased with this statement, as his lawyer responded in a public statement by basically saying that Norton was initially on board with the film and was set to star in it, but then Marvel called and said that they were dropping him and were going in a different direction with the role, hence why we got Ruffalo in Avengers four years later. More worried about it. Uh, you know, I, I, I was, I was very interested because I loved it. I, I, I'm not like snobby about, I loved those like comics and I, I subscribed to them. Yeah. I, I subscribed to Hulk. I, um, all the darker, st like Dark Knight, Frank Miller, <clears throat> the whole, all of it was really, you know, it was, it was, um, it, 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 it was, it was something I really, Latched on to him. And I love Bill Bixby. We're gonna ante up and do something like he's about it for me. He's oh, yeah. Yeah. For anyone our age, like right. he's, you yeah. know, him.
that's it. Um, Captain America is one of my favorite Marvel films, actually, not only because Hydra is cool as hell, but also because I appreciate how different it is from the other films. The movie opening in the present, with some people discovering the shield frozen in ice, is neat, setting up what happens at the beginning of the movie while not really ruining any investment that you would get from the actual meat of the story. And sure, it has the average character growth plot where they go through a number of challenges in life before really becoming the hero that they are by the end of it, but it's unique to me because of how much more grounded it feels. The 1940s setting mixed with the more futuristic technology, like at the World's Fair, where we see Stark Sr.'s flying car, and Hydra's technology being used alongside MP40s and Colts, creates an interesting contrast that reminds me a lot of the Wolfenstein games and similar properties. Mixing the old and new has always been a favorite of mine for world building, and I'm pleased to say that in this movie it's done very well. Chris Evans as Captain America fits much better than Ed Norton as Hulk. Red Skull makes for a pretty refreshing villain, and although a bit of the dialogue, particularly the scene when the Hydra base is about to explode and Steve confronts Skull for the first time, is rather corny, it's not a huge deal to me. As opposed to one big dummy fighting another big dummy like we usually have at the end of these movies, the film ends on a plane with Steve and Red Skull fighting to take control of the ship, with Skull trying to fly it over the United States, drop nuclear warheads on every major city, and Steve trying to send it into the Atlantic Ocean. Just two fellas with some big muscles duking it out and then trying to send a plane into the ocean. And honestly, the idea of Steve losing everything he knew when waking up in the future is pretty tragic. Maybe I'm just easily swayed by little heart tugs in movies, but I genuinely feel for the character's struggle to adjust for the present. The girl he liked is a geriatric, all of his friends are gone, and he's chilly as hell. Also, I don't think that's how freezing works. I don't know what you guys know about Beachy Island, but uh, when they pulled them out of the ice, they were not alive. So, you got detention. You screwed up. M moving on. Thor and Iron Man 2 are two movies that I like to group together because of just how forgettable they are. I've actually only seen Thor once and it was years ago because of how little of shit I actually care about the characters or the story. I just thought it was kind of the most generic of the initial origin story movies that Marvel has had and I found it really hard to become invested in anything in that movie. As for Iron Man 2, basically the same applies, it's just forgettable. That being said, Robert Downey Jr. did a pretty good job in his role as Tony, but that's really just to be expected. His performance alone did not save this movie. As for the only movie in Phase 1 that I haven't talked about, I like the Avengers quite a bit. For the time that it came out, it was pretty damn impressive. Creating a universe of heroes and then putting them all together in one big film to save the world was a pretty novel idea at the time. And while it's nothing new now that Marvel has put out a million movies doing the same shit, it was an impressive concept at the time and I appreciate it for that a lot. And sure, watching it now, some of the effects do look rather dated, and if you watch it on high resolution on a TV, it looks sort of shitty because all the sets look kind of fake and weird, but I can get past that because of the significance of in the world of superhero films and in the history of film in general, not to mention that it's still put together pretty well, even if it looks a little bit like a TV movie at times. It's not great, and it's not really one of my favorite movies, but it doesn't really blend together into this giant mess for me like the rest of them do. It's not forgettable. And that's really the problem that I have with the rest of these movies since Phase 1, really. The reason I talk about these two movies in particular is because they're really the only two from Phase 1 that emulate that similar problem. Reading through the list of movies in the MCU while gearing up to research for this video and to rewatch some of these movies, I was astonished by the number of them that I could barely remember watching. Keep in mind, I've seen all of them that have come out so far. Movies like Captain America 3, Avengers 2, Iron Man 3, Thor 2, and Thor 3 all felt so uneventful and boring to me. Every one of these movies has one of these giant world-ending events that is going to happen where if the hero doesn't succeed, then everyone will die and the bad guy will get everyone. And sure, that worked for the first few movies, like Captain America. That worked for the Avengers because it was the only time that we saw the team working together to save the world, really. But now it's just tiring. I barely remember what happened in Age of Ultron, and I watched it again for this video. This isn't to say that there aren't some movies that have been released in the MCU since Phase 1 that I've enjoyed at all. Much to the contrary, actually. I thought the Guardians of the Galaxy was great. It was refreshing, it was with new characters that I actually cared about, it was across the galaxy and space. It barely felt like a stereotypical Marvel movie at all to me. I even find myself growing attached to characters like Peter Quill and Rocket and Groot. They're all great, I'm a fan. Paul Rudd as Hank Pym is charming as ever, and I enjoyed Ant-Man a lot, and that's because I didn't really feel like an average Marvel movie. The plot felt new and refreshing while still using the normal Marvel formula, and I think the director, Peyton Reed, brought a new more comedic atmosphere to the entire thing. It was pretty good, I give Ant-Man a 7 out of 10. But as for Marvel movies as of recent that I've genuinely enjoyed and been invested in, that's really it. The absolute oversaturation of these movies is something that I think a lot of people have been feeling lately, and certainly I've been experiencing the full black-pilled view of Marvel. There is such thing as too much of a good, uh thing, and that's really what I feel like we're getting here. Sure, most of them are pretty confidently made movies, Most. but why even care? If there's five or six Marvel movies coming out in one year, why do any of them really matter that much? Personally, I can't find myself giving one about more than half of these. And even apart from mere oversaturation, some of these movies are just bad. I don't know if it's getting annoying for you guys that I have to talk about left-leaning identity politics in every video. I know, I'm getting annoyed. But movies like Black Panther and Captain Marvel are really nothing but agenda-pushing trash. Insert overdone rant about 
diversity! But really, even if the political message is something that I disagree with, I can get past it if the movie is well done and entertaining. If you do a good enough job of portraying a message and making it understandable for a general audience, and for people on the other side of the aisle, then people will appreciate it regardless. The problem is that agendas aside, these movies are still pretty trashed here. I don't think Black Panther is as terribly horrendous as some people have expressed it is online, but that being said, I definitely understand their grievances. From the poor CGI, the screenshots of which I'm sure you've seen scattered across Twitter and YouTube for people to laugh at, <laughs> to the really poorly thought out plot, laughable acting, and stupid villain. Like, as for Captain Marvel, eh, it was okay. Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Peter, is this really what you're simping over? Really? You do you. I just think there are there are better options out there, you know, that's all. I like this. Damn. The e-girl problem really is getting out of hand, isn't it? No e-girls! NEVER! Now that Infinity War and Endgame have come and gone, I just like... I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just ridiculous for having a hard time investing myself in the 80th time that the world almost ends, but I just genuinely do not care at this point. I guess the way to conclude this video would be to say that I... I'm sick. I'm sick, I'm actually feeling pretty ill right now, but also I'm sick of these movies. Maybe I've just got an old jaded boomer brain in regards to cinema in general, but I tend to agree with Martin Scorsese when he says that these movies are barely films. I mean, sure, hundreds of talented people work on them, from actors to artists to directors, but the end result is really not much better than a Michael Bay Transformers movie. Just a bunch of moving shapes and colors on screen, flying around and doing things together, and explosions and explosions and explosions and raise the defense! Looking to the future, we've got some, you know, some pretty cool stuff to look forward to. New and exciting movies like Black Widow, The Eternals, who, who, who is Shang-Chi? Shang who cares about Shang-Chi? Who asked? for Shang-Chi the movie. If you want to see some genuinely good superhero stuff, go watch The Boys on Amazon Prime. It's a different take on the whole shtick, and I don't really want to spoil too much, but it's it's really good. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you agree or disagree, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And now a message from today's sponsor. The word of the day is... Yeah!